Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for Eureka Math, grade five, module four, lesson 22, homework. And we're making good progress getting through module four. Lots of things to think about here. The objective in this lesson is to compare the size of the product to the size of the factors. I do a pretty nice job in the problem set video explaining about this. So if you don't understand what you're doing or if you read the directions and you're really confused about what the scaling factor is, um, go watch that video. I will explain it to you all there. For the homework, you should know what you're doing. You should have all this completed already and you should just be checking to see how well you did. So we're going to solve for the unknown here, rewrite each phrase as a multiplication sentence, and then circle the scaling factor and put a box around the number of meters. Now all of this is to compare the size of the product to the, to the size of the factors so that you can think about what did I start with? Am I finishing with something that's larger than or smaller than what I had at the beginning? And so using the scale factor and identifying it in uh, when you start, that's really important because what's happening to your, uh, to your product is going to, you want to think about it and understand how did it change from what I began with. All right, so let's do some. If I have one third as long as six meters, and don't worry about this yet, I have to figure out how many meters that actually is. So I need to circle the scale factor and put a box around what I actually have. So I actually have six meters, but I'm scaling it by a third. So I'm scaling it, taking a fraction of the six. Okay, for this one, it's the opposite. This is what I have. This is my scale. So I'm circling the scale and then I'm going to show in B what it looks like for each problem. So um, I want to write a multiplication sentence that reflects this. It's going to be one third as long as is a fancy way of doing multiplication. One third of six meters. So I would write it like this. I would put this in a fraction over one, six over one. If you choose to uh, simplify here, that's great. Or you can simplify here, that's great. You're gonna end up with two meters, that's your answer. Here you have your six times as long as what you have, which is one third of a meter. And again, put your whole number over one. You can cross cancel. Let's do the cross canceling here so everybody can see an example of both. And then you end up with two meters two meters okay so we ended up with two meters either way but what we had at the beginning was different now that's going to be reflected in your tape diagram got to draw a tape diagram to model each situation and describe what happened to the number of meters when it was multiplied what happened to the number when it was multiplied by the scaling factor so in the first one we have six meters you should draw your tape diagram showing six meters as the whole when you're taking one third of it, that denominator shows you the number of parts you should create and the numerator tells you how many you should shade. This is what we're looking for. That's what this represents. So when you find your one third of six and that equals two, okay, then that if that's two and that's two and that's two, that all should add up to six. That's what tape diagrams do. They take apart the whole. And so let's do this one, then we'll explain. If we are starting with one third of a meter, and I am going to repeat that six times, two, three, four, five, six, I'm just taking the one third meter and I'm repeating it over and over and over six times. So it's being repeated six times. So your tape diagrams look different, but you're searching for this, which ends up being the same. Okay, so make sure your tape diagrams look like this. Now let's write about what happens. Here, we're taking a fraction, take a fraction of the whole. Okay, and so the scale factor 
is smaller. So I'm getting a piece that's smaller. The scale factor is smaller than six or our total. So the product is smaller. Look for the relationship, okay? So we're taking a fraction of the whole, the fraction is less than that, and so our product is smaller. On this one, we're scaling it up. We are increasing the size, oops, the size of the factor. Okay, and we're doing it six times. So we're increasing it. So our product is larger. And that's what you need to come away with. If you understand this, you're all set for today then. <laughs> okay, now for number three, it says to fill in the blank with a numerator or denominator to make the number sentence true. And so you're looking at these and, and they can be different numbers. It doesn't say it has to be the same thing. I just need to reflect on what this symbol is and make this true. Now, if you look at the equal sign, there's only one way you can have four times a number equal to four. That would have to be a number equal to one because the only way you're gonna get four from that is if you have one, right? So four times one equals four. Now, going over here to these, I need to create something on this side of the equation that is greater. This has to have a greater value than five. If I start with five, or if I have something here and it's gonna be five times this, and it's gonna be bigger than five, then I need to have something that is greater than three. You can have a four here, or a five, or a six, or a 12, or a 300. You can have anything here that is greater than five. Let's put a six and you can see what I'm talking about. If I do six thirds, then I'm really creating a number like two, and then I have five times two, which is 10. The value of 10 is greater than five. If you put something small up here like one third, then I'm taking only a piece of five away, and that will not give me an answer greater. For this one, you have to do the, the opposite. I have to come up with something that is less, um, I'm sorry, it has to be greater, whoop, be careful. I have to have this side be less than 12, which means I have to have a number here that is greater than six because I need a proper fraction. So you could have seven or eight or uh, 12 or 16 or 300 on the bottom. And then what that's doing is you're taking a piece of 12, which will then be less than 12. So any number greater than six will work here. You could put eight and you could um, multiply it out. So any number larger than six in the blank right there, okay? And then any number here larger <clears throat> than three because you wanna create an improper fraction. And this one has to be five, that's all. <laughs> that's the only answer. Okay, how about the bottom here? So we're gonna look at the inequalities. Inequalities just mean it's not equal to, so the, hence the symbol here. These are inequalities. It says choose a single fraction. It has to be the same fraction in this as in here as in here, a single fraction to write in all three blanks that would make all three number sentences true. Explain how you know. So let's look at what we need to do. We have a little number here, a little fraction less than one. Now when I multiply this by something, it needs to be on this side ending up to be more than two thirds, okay? I have to have something more than two thirds. On this side, I need to end up with something greater than four. And on this side, I need to have something greater than five thirds. 
So what's a way you can get something to have greater value? Well, you could have an improper fraction. So if you look at an improper fraction here, like say um, 10 fifths, okay, that would be two. So it would be two thirds times two. And then I would have four thirds. And that's actually one and a third. So my left side of the equation would have a greater value because it would be bigger than the two thirds. So can I use that here too? Sure, four times 10 fifths, 10 fifths has a value of two. So four times two would be eight. Eight is greater than four, so I'm good there too. What about another improper fraction greater than one, 10 fifths? And then I could actually cross cancel that one and have 10 thirds and that would be three and a third. Whereas this one is one and two thirds. So it works on all three to have any improper fraction. And so as long as you know that, you can have any improper fraction. Now look at this one, inequalities again, but look at which way it's facing, okay? The symbol is facing the other way. This side was supposed to be greater, greater, greater on the left. Now this part has to be less than. This part must be less than. This part must be less than. So what do you think you should put in there? Hopefully you're saying any proper fraction. A proper fraction could be a unit fraction like one half, but you have to do the same one all the way across. Don't forget a single fraction. One half, one third, one eighth. You could even have two thirds. You could have 99 one hundredths. It has to be less than one because we're going to take a piece of the other factor. Okay, so any proper fraction, just you could put in one half all the way across if that makes you happy. You can try other things if you are adventurous. All right, write a number in the blank that will make this number sentence true. Look at the inequality. So we're looking at, we have to have, we've got three, and we're going to multiply it by something, and we need to end up with something less than one. So how are you going to find a number to multiply by three and have a product less than one. So you could try trial and error if you uh, wanted to set a few things up, but I would look at this and say, hmm, if I need to have something less, then I have to have a, a proper fraction. But if I had a proper fraction that was like one third, and watch what happens, if I have a proper fraction and I just say, well, let's try one third. What if I multiply it and I get one is one less than one? No, it's not. One is equal to one. So you need to have something that is going to be a proper fraction that has a smaller value than one third. Anything smaller than one third would work here. So you could do one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, and so on. Um, let's just say one sixth. And uh, those would all work. And Spend some time calculating what you put. If you choose a non-unit fraction, like say two-thirds, that could be tricky because you may not have um, a small enough fractional value. So choose something that's less than one-third if you can do that. Um, let's see. Explain how multiplying by a whole number can result in a product less than one. Now here is what we were trying to figure out here. So we're going to explain, if you have um, these factors, okay, so if I have something starting with like a three, if you choose something that is a little bit less, it makes it easier for your final answer. Um, so what am I talking about here? Let me write something out. You can, we're going to explain here, find a small fraction or fractional part is really what we need because we have to get something less than one of a number. So like 
take one and you want to do half of one. So how can I multiply by a whole number? How can I get the lights to stay on for more than 10 minutes? Okay, for more than 15 apparently. Okay, if you find a fraction of a number, you can get a number, a product that's less than one. Multiplying by a whole number can give you a product less than one if you're looking for a small fractional part of a number. If you take a number like four, okay, multiplying by a whole number, if I only have half of four, well, what happens? Half of four is two, and so you're not getting you're not getting a product less than one. So you'd have to have a factor that's small or have a little tiny piece of that number, a little tiny piece of it. So if you had um, a number that was a little bit bigger, like say two, just take a small fractional part of it. Let's say we take one eighth of two. Hopefully this makes it clearer what I'm talking about as I yammer on. Okay, so if you're taking a smaller fractional part of a number, then you can end up with a product less than two. So one eighth of two, this is my whole number, would give me one fourth. And that's how I'm ending up with a product less than one if I take a small fractional part of the number. So the size of the number matters, but, but the size of the fraction also matters. Okay, I hope that's clear. It, it's just, you know, sometimes when I think about, is anybody really gonna have to know this in life? The answer is just no. But anyway, I'm sure for the math people, they're like, ah, this is super important. Oh, sorry, I should not be. So, okay, I'm gonna move on, be positive. In a sketch, a fountain is drawn one fourth yard tall in the sketch. The actual fountain will be 68 times as tall. My goodness, how tall will the fountain be? Well, if this is your scale factor, okay, the fountain is one fourth, but it's gonna be 68 times that. So when you set up your multiplication problem, your uh, factor times factor equals product, you can cross cancel or you can multiply across and then simplify here. Either way, you're gonna end up dividing 68 by four. If you can't do that without setting it up, well, set it up over here. Or you can look at it as four into six, that goes one time. With two left over, that's what would be happening here. Two left over, bring down the eight, and then, or group the two with the eight to make 28. I'm doing this all in my head. And then divide 28 by four, which would be seven. And that's where you get your 17 with no remainder. And that's going to be yards tall. How tall will the fountain be? The actual one's going to be 68 times taller than a fourth of a yard. 17 yards tall. Gigantic, really, by today's standard. Okay. And the next one, uh, the last one. Oh, click subscribe. Do come back again. In blueprints, an architect's firm drew everything, 1 24th of the actual size. The windows will actually measure 4 feet by 6 feet, and the doors will measure 12 by 8. What are the dimensions of the windows and doors in the drawing? So the drawing is 1 24th of each of these numbers. So let's take a look at the windows. And if we need to know what 1 24th of 4 feet is, you just set it up like this, 1 24th of 4. This is simply 1 times 4 over 24. You can simplify and end up with 1 6th of a foot. But that's only one dimension. We also need the 6 feet. So 1 24th of 6 feet. And now I have, again, 6 over 24, which can be simplified into 1 fourth. So the windows dimension, dimensions, windows, are 
one sixth foot by one fourth foot. And those are the dimensions. If you don't like the multiplication sign there because you're like, what, I have to do more work, that's confusing, just put by like they did here. That's what you do when you write um, uh, math dimensions uh, for a room. It's this by that, okay? And if I was gonna find the area, that would be what I would do, I would multiply. Okay, but we're not working on windows, we're gonna work on doors, which are 12 by eight, but I need 1 24th of that, of 12 feet which now can be simplified very easily into one half of a foot for one of them, but I need the other one as well. 1 24th of eight feet. Hopefully you knew that and you did it right and you're checking and going, oh my gosh, I did so great. And there you have one third foot. So the doors are a half of a foot by a third of a foot and voila you are all done and i hope you did just a fabulous job on your homework and i hope this was fun i hope you get it and we'll see you on the next video goodbye for now